Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys how you can get a cylinder or a chain or any other shape to conform to a curve shape that you've drawn. So this is very useful uh, for things, obviously I'll use the screen here as an example, um, for doing things like a bike chain, tank treads, um, cables that may need to curve around and need some of that flexibility because it's not just a solid piece of metal but something uh, that often does change direction and shape as it goes on. And uh, you want to basically take a curve and you want to apply a shape to it and repeat that shape all the way around the shape. So I'll go ahead and grab these two pieces of the chain here, which I'll talk about in just a second. So let's go to a separate layer. And we can see here, uh, I have a chain and if I hit tab, we can see the original link because I haven't applied the array modifier or the curve modifier yet. And we can see that this individual link is just one tiny piece, did a little bit of modeling on it. Um, and the most important thing to note here is if you are gonna have any kind of shape like this, make sure it's a shape that can perfectly repeat. So you see I have these two sections here and then the third part actually pops out on the side. So this third part, is meant to sit on top of one of these first parts. So uh, by doing that and extrapolating it all the way around the curve, it allows it to repeat properly. But if you're just using a simple cylinder, you probably don't need to really worry about that. Um, so the other component, aside from just having one giant array, you can see here X number of pieces, um, relative offset um, is just how far away from the original point do you want each array link to repeat. And in this case, it's only 0 0.810 because um, that's the right number to get these pieces to line up exactly with each other. So um, beyond that, you need a curve to actually apply it to. So in this case, I have this curve, which I've drawn. Uh, let's see if we can go over here. In the Create panel, it's a Bezier curve, I believe. It was either Bezier curve or Bezier circle. Um, either should work. And uh, the idea is you just define the path that you want it to actually be applied to. So this can be pretty much any shape. Let's hit tab on the curve here. You can see that there's a lot of these individual points and curve adjustments to make it get into the shape you want. Um, if you ever need to add more points, you can just select two and then subdivide them. And that would add a third point in between, giving you more depth, more control over the curve, but also making it more complicated. And you just kind of work out the shape that you actually want. Now, uh, once you have the shape and once you have the original piece, the one that you want to repeat, um, you will have to make an array modifier. I don't think it actually matters which direction it goes, and it might, um, but yeah, just repeat it however many times you want to repeat, which you will actually know how many times you actually want to repeat once it starts confirming to the curve. Um, and then you need to apply uh, a curve modifier with the actual curve or the circle as your shape there. So just to quickly show creating a curve, it's not really that complicated. Uh, you just select Bezier curve or something like that. You hit tab to go into edit mode um, and you kind of just drag the curve wherever you want it. Now, uh, obviously for most things, you're not going to be able to get away with just two points. So I'm going to subdivide this a couple times, make it a more complicated curve. You can also drag the outer sides of the Bezier to get more control over exactly whatever shape you want the curve to take. And you just have to play around with it for a while until you get it right. So once you have a curve that you actually like, uh, so for instance, here I have a curve for the derailleur on this bicycle, and I want uh, basically a basic cylinder shape to follow this curve as I was doing for the other brakes and derailleur cables here. So. What I'm gonna do is, let's see, I guess I'll go over to here for the original derailleur cable. You can see I haven't applied the modifier yet. It's just one piece of the chain. I'm gonna duplicate that, drag it out. I'm gonna make it its own piece. Um, let's 
hide the modifiers for a second here. So, so to start working on this derailleur cable over on the right side, I'm going to um, grab the original cylinder from the other derailleur cable so that they're the same size and shape. I'm going to duplicate that piece. I'm going to pull that piece out with P, separate. So that is now its own cable. And for now, I will hide the modifiers so that it's not getting in the way. And then I wanna move this piece over to the same location as this derailleur cable. And I'm gonna do that as an object. So first, I guess I will set the original origin to the center of this current piece, um, just for consistency. And let's see here. So what I'll do, because uh, that's what I was doing for the other pieces is, I would, well, first I'll adjust the cable a little bit more here to make, it sh make sure that it's more like what I want. Let's drag that up a bit, make sure it curves in there nicely. And now take this point right here where the end of the cable is, and I'm gonna put that, uh, the cursor there, and then I'm going to set the object origin of both objects to that location. So cursor to selected, that's shift S. Uh -huh. Okay, and now I'm gonna set the origin of that cable there. And I'm also gonna grab this piece over here, control S, selection to cursor, and uh, because that also moves the origin, that makes it perfectly in the same spot. So having it in the uh, same origin location is going to save you some trouble in the long run. Now we want to make sure that the rotation on this cable is probably set to zero. I think that would be best. Okay, I'll also apply the scale, uh, not that that actually matters. And now uh, we also want the location to be exactly the same. So. Um, that's part of why we're setting the origin. So by setting the origin location there, this is this basically becomes the offset off of 0. 0.000 on the grid. And now that those transforms are matching up, it should be able to curve perfectly along this without any trouble. So what I'm going to do now is go over here to this object. And if you don't have a curve modifier, add one in. So I'm going to remove the old object and I'm going to change it to this front derailleur. I'm going to show it. Okay, so let's see what's going on here at the moment. Ah, okay, so the array is still hidden, so let's show that. And actually it looks like that pretty much did it. With the exception that the cable is now way too long. You can see when it gets to the end of a curve, it just keeps continuing anyway. Um, also, we want to make sure that it's fitting nicely into what other, whatever object we have up here at the end. Seems okay. Um, now, when you're doing it, it might default to deformation axis X. So uh, make sure you change the deformation axis. And as long as you have them both in the same rotation and the same position, uh, one of these axes should be the right one, depending on whatever angle you're looking at it. So it's Y for me. And I'm gonna to go to the end of this cable and take some numbers off of the array. You might be doing the opposite. You might be increasing this count, but here I need to decrease it. So I'm just gonna scale this down until it's not showing. Increase it a couple more times. Um, yeah, 187, we can get it to that. Now, obviously 187 is a lot of individual pieces on this cable that's going to give it a, a lot of resolution when it comes to making the curve smooth but that also means that it's going to take up more faces in your total polygon count um, also when you do apply it you're going to want to make sure go back into your curve make sure that it's not intersecting with any weird pieces here um, and you may need to change the curve a little bit in order to better fit your object uh, assuming you're doing something like this something mechanical so i'll probably work on this a bit more after the video but you can kind of get the idea just shift the curve and then when you move the curve that's going to move all of these pieces you may actually change the total number that you need at the end so like here uh, because the curve shape became a bit more complicated it would need a couple extra pieces to actually finish this off 
Um, just don't apply the array modifier or the curve modifier until you're sure you have it right. Um, I would recommend saving a backup as well. Um, may save you some hassle in the long run. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to getting a shape to conform to a curve so that you can make a complicated shape and a repeating pattern on your model. So I hope that this tutorial on getting a shape to conform to a curve in Blender was helpful for you guys. I have been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.